The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, I'm Karen and this is The Learning Circuit. Today we're going to build the capacitance substitution box. Once the kit is assembled, it can be really useful. You can plug it into your circuit in place of a capacitor that you maybe don't have that value lying around, or you can use it to try out different values of capacitance to see which works best. Just gather up your tools because this kit comes with everything else you need. The capacitors in this kit are all non-polar, mostly ceramic and mylar. So this means that once the box is built, you can plug it into your circuit in either orientation and it'll work just fine. This kit has capacitors with values from 100 picofarads up to 0.1 microfarads. Let's take a look at them and see how to read the markings to figure out each capacitor's value. If we look at the assembly instructions page of the manual, we can see which capacitor goes in each place on the board. So I noticed something a little funny with the PCB in our capacitance substitution box kit. Um, we had also made one of the resistance substitution boxes before, which is made by the same manufacturer. And it looks like they decided to save a little bit of money and use the same PCB. So all of the capacitor places are marked with R and a number. Uh, typically on a PCB, it would mark with C and a number. So it looks like maybe they cheated a little bit and decided to save some money rather than having proper corresponding labels. But it'll still work the same. Markings on capacitors can vary depending on the manufacturer and what type of capacitor it is. You usually want to look for a series of three numbers to figure out the value. The first two numbers are the first two digits of the value, and the third is a multiplier. A letter at the end shows the tolerance. If you see 101K, the K doesn't mean thousand. It means a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. Here's a chart that shows what other letters mean different tolerances. Let's find the capacitor for R1, which according to the instructions is 100 picofarads. So we're looking for one with the markings of 101. Now, if we remember how capacitance works, it's directly relative to the amount of surface area within the capacitor. So if we're looking for a small value capacitor, it's probably also gonna be small in size. Let's look. Yep, our smallest capacitor says 101, so that's what we need for R1. Now, that might not necessarily be true for the rest of them, but it's a good place to start. Okay, I'm gonna solder this one on and then continue finding and placing the rest of the capacitors. Now, this board was designed for resistors, so placing the leads into the holes can be a little bit tricky, so just do your best. Now that all the capacitors are soldered in place, let's populate the rest of the components. First, solder on the switch in the SW3 spot. Next, take your red and black wires, cut one and a half inches off of each, and set that aside for later. Take the larger pieces of red and black wire and strip the ends. We want to tin the ends by adding a small amount of solder. Solder the red wire to red on the PCB and the black wire to black on the PCB. Tie the wires together in a knot as close as possible to the PCB. Now take the rotary switches. Bend the tabs down. Insert the switches into the PCB and solder them into place. Now take your small pieces of wire, trim and tin the ends, and solder them 
to the wiper pin, and then up to the switch. It doesn't matter which color goes on which side. Next, thread the wires through the hole in the faceplate. Next, take the alligator clips and remove the rubber. Thread the rubber onto the wires. Then take the alligator clips and solder them to the ends of the wires, replacing the rubber back onto the clip. Push the faceplate all the way on, place the washers on the shaft of each knob, and then secure with a nut. Now we need to add the knobs so that the line is pointing at the wiper. Placing the knobs are a little tricky. Uh, we need to make sure that the wipers underneath are pointing to the correct pin and that we know which one is which. So I'm gonna give you a little cheat. Um, if you rotate this, there's a little ball that you can see. If you have it pointing straight down, then on knob one, that's pointing at R8. So you can have your line on your knob pointing to 820 picofarads. On knob two, if you put the ball facing straight down, that's pointing to R20, and you can have your knob pointing to 0 0.033 microfarads. To show off the capacitor substitution box, I've built a little circuit so that we can see the difference between our lowest value capacitor and our highest value capacitor. Let's take a look. In my circuit, I have my switch, which has power coming to it from my desktop power supply. Now that supplies power to both the LED, which has the safety resistor, and that goes back out to ground of the power supply. And then there's also these two leads that I have hooked up to my capacitance substitution box. Now, what'll happen is when I turn this switch on, the power supply will be powering the LED and it will be charging the capacitor. When I turn this off, the capacitor and LED are still in parallel, so the capacitor will actually be powering the LED. So let's see what happens. I have my multimeter hooked up also to read my capacitor to see what's going on in there. So I have it set to my lowest value. I'm going to turn this on. Charges it up to three volts. Let's see how fast that discharges. Pretty fast. Now I'm going to turn off my power supply. I'm going to switch to microfarad. So now I'm at my highest capacitance value. Let's supply power to the circuit. Okay. Didn't take very long to charge up. If I turn the circuit off, let's see how fast that 0.1 microfarad capacitor discharges. Much slower. So that's the difference. Now the capacitors in the capacitance substitution box are all fairly small values. If I had some capacitors on hand that were say 1000 microfarads or 10,000 microfarads, the LED would have actually stayed on longer being powered by the capacitor. So what uses do you think you can find for the capacitance substitution box? Tell us about them on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning.